that showcases the vibrant, dynamic, and growing Kenya-United States partnership. The American Chamber of Commerce Regional Business Summit reinforces our relationship, which stands firmly on the sound foundation of shared values, including commitment to liberty, democracy, and free enterprise. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, we had a virtual meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden and other world leaders at the Democracy Summit, where I underscored our commitment to constitutionalism and the rule of law and respect for institutions. This summit is important because the government of Kenya has embraced and is aggressively implementing the plan for the bottom-up economic transformation of Kenya. We committed to transform the economy by creating a business-friendly environment. Under our plan, we are building the blocks to create wealth. We are already creating jobs and attracting local and foreign investors. We identified five broad sectors in which we shall channel strategic investment to catalyze and maintain high rates of economic growth and performance. The plan, therefore, requires huge investment under various innovative frameworks so as to achieve, among many things, the following. Number one, to transform our agro-industrial productivity and to enhance our food security. Number two, to actualize universal health coverage, including the production of medical commodities and biomedical supplies. And I was very happy that I met companies that want to work with us in this space uh, this afternoon. The digital superhighway and last mile fiber infrastructure. Again, I was very happy to meet tech companies that will take advantage of this platform to enhance e-commerce and to create opportunities for our tech-savvy, youthful population. Of course, the micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises that form the base and the foundation, employing close to 80% of our population, is a critical cog of what we must achieve while ensuring that we construct at least 200,000 housing units every year, both to create jobs, to expand the economy, and to create livelihoods for millions of our citizens. Underlying these five pillars is a commitment to complete an ambitious program of infrastructure development covering transport, and communication. I just came back this morning from signing an agreement that will give us about 350 million shillings to do our BRT that will be working on e-mobility. <laughs> Among various implementation formats that we have, been adop that we have uh, adopted, the public-private partnership model has emerged as particularly effective in aligning opportunities with appropriate incentives and in mobilizing necessary finances to achieve win-win outcomes under conditions where we have limited fiscal space and therefore mobilizing the private sector to come with their expertise and resources so that together we can supply public good is an intervention that we cherish, and I am very confident that this summit has discussed, among other things, the opportunities available in our PPP framework. I am here to invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to seriously consider these opportunities, take advantage of our excellent bilateral relations, and partner with us in this exciting journey. Several reasons which speak to the defining features of the means as well as the ends of this program and projects motivate this invitation. 
We are particularly interested in ecological, ecologically responsible approaches to development and the application of techniques and frameworks which enhance sustainability, strengthen resilience, and promote environmentally responsible productivity. I am confident that in this room, I am speaking to leaders of enterprises whose business propositions combine profitability with sustainability, innovation, and ecological responsibility. I further wish to elaborate on the context of the opportunities on offer in Kenya generally and in the context of our plan. We are, as has been said, the gateway to our region and our continent by virtue of our incomparable geostrategic position. Kenya offers the most advantageous location to set up whether you are interested in domestic market, East Africa, Comesa, SADC, the Horn of Africa, or anywhere else in the continent of Africa. It is a fact that many global multinational firms international organizations and NGOs find Nairobi a rational and strategic choice for their headquarters and operational hubs. They are not wrong, neither would you be. Kenya's advantageous location has been optimally complemented by a nation of well-educated, highly skilled, hospitable, and enterprising people. Communication is easy, and our labor force is famously agile and flexible. Our Kenyan workforce has and remains probably the greatest strength that we have as a nation. In addition to this attractive package of compelling attributes, we have undertaken tremendous investments to develop transport, communication, and energy infrastructure. We are connected by a good network of ports, railways, roads, and airports spread all over the country. Kenya is also supported by a good energy mix that is 92% green and on the way to becoming 100% green by 2032. Wind and geothermal power generation potential is abundant, including hydro generation resources. As you can see, we are not just a gateway by virtue of geographical accident. We are intentional about refining and strengthening our strategic advantage because Kenya is open for business. This is to say that Kenya is interested in and committed to promoting the best operating environment for business enterprises, and that our policy and institutional framework is designed to make Kenya the most competitive investment destination. It is also to affirm that we are determined to deliver on every single undertaking, commitment, and pledge that we make to any stakeholder, be they citizens, communities, businesses, or our international partners like the ones we have in this room this afternoon. My friends, Kenya is not only open for business, we also mean business. <laughs> but there is more work to be done Private sector players make long-term investment decisions in an environment with predictable policies, among them tax policies. My administration is finalizing a new tax policy guideline that have gone through various stakeholder consultations, including inputs from AMCHA. This policy that will enhance transparency in our tax regime will take effect by June 2023, that is this year, and we will, it will be in place for a minimum of three years, please. We're doing this so that you can make your investment decisions knowing exactly how the 